And welcome to blog number 34, me learning to play the Melodeon. And it is exactly two years since I started. And uh, so I wanted to share a few thoughts with you about my first two years on this instrument. Uh, the tune I was playing for you there was something uh, that I wrote uh, for uh, a play that I was in called Allo Allo, which you may have heard of. Um, basically what they wanted was something kind of bright and countryfied. Uh, while a uh, Swedish film was being played, uh, if you get my drift. And um, so that's what I came up with, just a nice easy thing in G. And I was actually playing it uh, backstage because uh, I was ready to come on for another scene. So I was actually wearing a pair of long johns at the time and a shirt. Not a pretty sight, luckily the audience couldn't see me. Uh, that tune is called Norma and a very simple thing in the key of G. So in the two years I've been playing, um, I've had a few gaps where I haven't been that well, but I've, uh, you know, I've managed to keep going. I still absolutely love it. Um, I'm able to play with a smile on my face now, which is, which is good, isn't it? Which is a step in the right direction. Um, I've fallen victim to MAD, of course, uh, Melodian Acquisition Disease. Uh, and I've got about eight of the things now. And I, I can make a case for all of them, if my wife asks. So it's a matter of uh, taking stock now and sort of thinking about which way I want to go in the future, what I've actually learned. I've obviously made a few mistakes, uh, certainly in technique, which uh, people like Lester Bailey have picked me up on. Uh, thank you, Lester. And uh, I'm really glad they did, and hopefully I'm a, a bit of a better player now because of it. Um, I'm just about to take delivery of a one-row Melodium, which I'm looking forward to, uh, to trying out, and that'll be a different uh, direction for me to go on. Um, I have two row melodians like this, three rows, and hopefully a one row as well, very soon. Um, one of the things I've learnt is to enjoy it and relax. Uh, when I first got it, uh, I was just loving the newness of it, and then the kind of worry set in, and I started fretting about it, which is about the worst thing you can do with any musical instrument. So I've just learnt to relax and enjoy myself, play when I feel like playing, and if I don't feel like playing, I don't pick it up. Um, you know, you can sort of drive yourself a bit nuts with these things. And I tend to be a fairly obsessive sort of person, so, you know, I do tend to get uh, very worried about things when I shouldn't do. So I was just, you know, giving myself a good talking to, and I said, Les, come on, just relax and enjoy the thing. And it is a very enjoyable instrument. Anyway, to finish this very short blog, I'm going to play you a tune called Pluto. Don't call Pluto a planet, to give it its full title. I've already done this in a previous blog, but I'm going to show it to you on two of my three row boxes. So this is uh, Don't Call Pluto a Planet but, uh, on three rows in the key of C. <laughs>
and on that uh, version I was using just the, the two M reeds, two middle reeds. And that's a, a good sound, isn't it? I love this box, it's quite heavy, it's probably the heaviest box I've got at 12 pounds. But it's, uh, it's really nice and it's surprisingly quiet as well. Okay, let's show you the same piece on another of my boxes now. Okay, this is the Roland FR18, the infamous electronic melodeon, um, much uh, maligned by melodeon players and understandably so because it is a bit of a beast but it's quite a useful thing um, I'm going to play Pluto on this one and I'm going to play it with a bit of uh, reverb built in which I quite like <laughs> Okay, so if you're wondering about these uh, uh, instruments, um, they're great in, in the sense that you can put them in any key you want and you can add reverb and effects and get different sounds. The major downside with them is, uh, or are, the bellows, uh, which are a complete nightmare. I have them set stiff, you can either have them set stiff or set sloppy. If they're set sloppy they just close way too soon and stiff you need to be pretty strong to pull them out and uh, push them in. Bit of a nightmare. I know that uh, Reese Wesson, a uh, very famous me melodeon player and melodeon builder, had one and he completely rebuilt the air button and swore he'd never do it again because it was such a, a nightmare for him. So if uh, in an ideal world I'd have a, a much better air button system on mine. But it is useful. I mean, uh, I work in school quite a lot, so with this tune I've been using uh, using this melodeon in school and I just put some drums on it, and so you've got like a built-in band. So when you play your bass drum, uh, when you play your bass notes, you get, um, bass note gives you the bass drum and a hi-hat, and then you get the, uh, the, the tambourine and a snare drum, I think. Might just be might just be a tambourine, but it, it sounds quite good. Let's give you a bit of that. Which is a bit of a problem. Is it, it, the the right hand uh, buttons are so fast; it kind of runs away with you. Uh, I find that I, I find it very, very hard to keep the tempo down. Um, it's probably my fault more than the machine. But it's such a such a fast action. There's absolutely no giving it at all. So uh, you, you do find, well, I find that it does tend to, as I say, run away with me. But you know, if you treat it for what it is, it's never going to replace. Uh, a proper melodeon. If you're a serious melodeon player, uh, you would definitely not want to buy one of these and nothing else. It's a, a, an interesting addition, but will never replace your nice collection of Honas and Castagnaris and Sorterelles and Dino Buffettis, whatever you've got. Um, but if you are uh, uh, prepared to be sort of fairly open-minded and give a bit of time to the manual, you can get some really good results out of it. And uh, and I certainly. I've thought about selling it a few times. I actually picked it up reasonably cheaply, so it's not too much of a nightmare. And it's just a, a nice thing to dip into every now and again. One thing I have uh, decided over the last few months is that I'm going to adopt, and I have been adopting, this four finger left hand approach. So for instance, on this tune, uh, fingers uh, two and one there, fingers four and three there. Um, it is a bit fiddly, uh, but I really believe it's worth the effort. Uh, if you're a dyed-in-the-wool uh, melodeon player and you've been playing all your life using two fingers, then 
uh, it's probably might be too late to change I've only been playing a couple of years and uh, as I say it's in the last few months I've decided to change but it's definitely helped and I'm going to stick with it <laughs> hope you found that interesting that is the end of blog number 34 and the end of my first two years on the instrument and I've certainly enjoyed it and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all those people who've helped me on my way um, encouraging me advising me um, I really do appreciate it anyway I'll see you in the next blog